Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to take a look at how to work with a headline, specifically how to change its colors and even its fonts, font weights, stuff like that, using a little bit of CSS code. Because a lot of people are having trouble in that they are putting in a bold headline or putting in part of it as being bold and not getting the color to change. And so I just wanted to show you all how to do that. So just ignore that up at the top. I was building an offer stack as an example for something. So let's just come in here, let's just put in a headline element, and then let's come in, we're going to change this, we're going to override it, and for right now we want to start off with Montserrat, and you're going to see right here, it says, well let's actually, let's beef up this uh, font size a little bit here, so you see it a lot better. And you can see here it says that the font size or font weight on this right now is thin. Well, I can tell you it's not thin. So it must come in. Let's just see here. Let's save this and let's take a look at it. And let's see what does this font weight come in as originally. should probably be 400. We got our H1 here. We got a font weight of 400. And so it says it's thin, which should be a font weight of 100, but it isn't. So let's just change this. We'll go back to thin. There you go. See, it gets really skinny. Let's save this. Let's reload this page here. And as we come back in, we will see now we have a font weight of 100. And if you come into the uh, Mozilla developer page here and you look up font weight, you can see, first off, you got a little tool here you can play with to change things around if you want. You can see some of the syntax here of your different font weights of 100 through 900. But then if you scroll down here far enough, you will see what the 100 through 900 uh, go to. And in fact, I guess it goes all the way up to 950 here, which is extra black, which I don't think we have available inside of 2.0. I think we just have 100 through 900 with the corresponding terms. And so you can see here normally, especially in 1.0, your normal font weight would have been your 400 and your bold font weight would have been your 700, just to give you a reference there. And you can, of course, check out the rest of the page down here. So now let's go back into our funnel. And now that we know what those font weights mean, we can see over here, again, we got 100, 200, 300, 400, all the way up. So when you're writing your CSS code, you can either say font weight of 100, or you can say font weight of thin, and it will give you the exact same result there. So now what the question becomes is most people want to come in and they want to say, okay, I want to set my, uh, my text here to bold, and then I want to come down to the bottom and I want to make that bold red and it does not turn red. So let's take a look at this. Again, we will save this and we will keep looking at the code to see why this is. So now this will come back in, it'll pull it up here. We got our H1 tag, we have a span inside of it, but nowhere in here are we seeing anything that is a B tag. And that's specifically what the code is looking for here is a B tag signifying that this element is bold. We can come down here, we can see our font weight of 700, but there is nothing on here for a B tag. So in order to get this to work, what you really have to do to get that to turn red is you have to come into your element here. You have to change the font weight to something else. So let's say we're going to change it to regular. And then we're going to come in and we're going to highlight the entire thing and we're going to give it a B tag. Save the page. We'll come out here. We will reload the page. And then we will see what we have. We'll open up our span again right here. And we should have, oops, did not save or something. So let's try this again. We will save it. We will click on preview even. Now it's definitely red. So let's inspect this element. And now down here inside of our H1 tag, you come down inside the span. We now have the entirety of all the words surrounded by that B tag right there. Now, of course, we can take this a little bit further and we can say, okay, well, let's make this word here. Let's make this word italics and let's make the word action here. Let's underline that. And then let's go here and make this a strike through. And so now we're going to come up. You always have to click outside, um, outside of this element somewhere else and then save or else it doesn't like to pick everything up. And what we're gonna see now is that the entirety of this 
uh, text here is going to be surrounded by a B tag right here. So we got our B tag surrounding the whole thing. Then inside of it, we had the word call with an I tag. We had U for underline for action. And then we had our strike through on the word headline here. So as we start looking at all these different things, we can start thinking to ourselves now, okay, well, what if I want to change the color of the word call? How can I change the color of just the word call? Well, we know that we have the call inside of an italics tag here. So what we can do is what we'll do is we'll go into our code. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab what is the, well, in fact, let's, let's do this here. Let's come inside of this element right here and we will give this an ID of its own. So just come down here and we'll say we want to generate this ID and then we're going to copy it. And let's just uh, roll this down on the page a little bit because I don't need this right now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to paste in that ID. We're going to give it a couple of curly brackets. And now what we're going to say is we want that thing where we got the italicized. So we got to come back up here and we're going to say we're just going to put in that I tag right there to send it signify that we're looking just for the italics part here. And then we're going to say, let's say we want this to be color of blue. And now it changed to blue. We can put a semicolon there and then we can say also text decoration of underline. Now it's underlined. We could even go so far as to say font family uh, what was another one I was using? Let's just say Osborne. That's just one that's coming to the top of my head right now. So now we just changed it to Osborne. Well, I don't like Osborne. So what was the other one I was thinking of using for this example here? Let me take a look at it. Uh, we had Montserrat and we had Roboto. That was it. So let's go back into our code and let's change that to Roboto. R-O-B-O-T-O. -O. Now it's to Robonto. And then normally how you do this on your font families, let's just go over here and look at this font family. So here we're saying that the font family on this is Montserrat. And then you normally say comma sans serif. So what happens is if it's for some reason not able to find a Roboto font, it will then default to the standard sans serif font that is in your browser. So it's browser specific as to which sans serif font they have as their default. So we can say font family Roboto and sans serif. And now we just changed everything about that singular word. Now, I will tell you right now that what you can do with this on the font family is you can use any font family that is currently loaded in here by click funnels. Can you use one of your custom fonts? Answer is probably yes. Let me just pause this for a second. Wait, in fact, this ninja strike there, that actually is a custom font that I have loaded up in here. So let's do this. Let's change this whole thing to Ninja Strike. Let's save this because what I got to do is find out exactly what the syntax is on that font family. It may just be Ninja Strike, but I don't know until I see it here. And the font family says here actually font-88. That's very interesting. So let us see here. Let's change this back. I bounced out of there somehow. So let's change this back to Montserrat. And then let's go back into our code. And let's see what we get. If we just change out here, font dash 88. And there it actually worked. So that's a way you could take a custom font you uploaded into ClickFunnels and put it into the middle of any sentence anywhere you want just by grabbing the ID and saying we want to uh, change this out. Now, here's the next thing you're going to say to yourself, okay, well, here we got a problem. We got the word strike, and I don't know why it's taking out the spaces in between here, so just be careful of that. But here we got one where we got a strike through. So we're going to do the exact same thing up here. Let's take this. We'll just copy this down here. And instead of the I, we're going to say we want to go strike. And instead of blue, let's make this green. 
And instead of text decoration underline, we're going to say text decoration of none because we wanted to get rid of that strike. So we're saying let's get rid of that text decoration. And then up here again, let's just send this back to our, let's just make it the standard sans serif font right there. So again, right in here, we can change everything. Again, like I said before, we can change our font weight. Any CSS um, property that applies to text at this point, you can then put in here now. So we're going to say font weight of, let's just say 100. So it made it very small. As I said before, we could also use the term thin, not this, thin. Oop, I thought you could. I could be wrong about that, so strike that part. Um, I really thought you could use the term thin instead, but we'll just go back to font weight of 100. And there is no units on font weight. So here it's a font weight of 100. It's not like 100 pixels, 100 RAM, 100 anything. It's just 100. So I guess I was wrong. You cannot use actual um, actual words in there. And, of course, with our colors up here, as well, we could say we want this to be hashtag FF0000, which will give us red. Or if we got 00FF00 is blue, and then we could have 0000FF is is uh, red, green, blue. Red, green. No, it should have been green. Yeah, the second one, I guess, was green. Uh, I wasn't even paying attention there. So that's green right there. So anything you could do. Uh, as far as changing it, any way you want this to look, you can change this out. Like I said, you can change out the fonts. You can change out everything else. Now, something that someone else brought up, which I found to be interesting, is he said in order to change the colors, what he did is he came in here and he set this as a hyperlink. And then he came over here to the color changer. You can't see it because it's now currently in black. And so let's make this a blue color. So we'll just make this a blue color here. And he said, that's what happened, except now what the problem was is when you hover over it, you get the underline on it. And also, I want to see what the reaction is, how it works when we save this. And then we click on it as well. Let me see here. So hover over it, we get that. And then what happens on the page? So nothing does happen on the page. Okay. I wasn't sure because a lot of times if you leave just the hashtag in on something like this, it will actually cause the page to reload. And in this case, it did not cause the page to reload. So we have to figure out now, how do we get the text decoration of the underline not to show up on there if this was a technique you wanted to use in order to just set a color, which it's a totally legitimate way of working around this problem. Um, there's nothing that says it's good or bad or anything else. So let me see here. So let's take a look at this. Let us take a look at that code and see what the code tells us about how this is being... So we had the strike on here, but generally speaking, we wouldn't have a strike, but we do have an A. And so then, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say A hover. So we're going to come in here. We're going to grab a hold once again of that ID that we created. We're going to put that there. We're going to say A, and then we're going to say hover because we want to affect what's going to happen when we hover over that anchor text, which is what the A stands for. And we're going to say here then, text, if I could type, decoration of none should do it. So now if we come out here and we hover over this, now we have no more text decoration. Let's save this, and I keep going into the body there. So let's save this, and then we will pull up a new one. And as we hover over it, uh, but we do still have one thing. We do still get the pointy finger. See, so the rest of these here, we're not getting the pointy finger. So what we need to do is go back into our custom code. And we'll do one more thing here. Um, you see, in order to turn that on, you always say cursor pointer. So I'm pretty sure it's cursor default is what we would have there. So let me see. Okay. Wait, this one here is now getting it and that's not. So, all right, well, that's interesting. Let's see and let's preview this. Let's see what it looks like on the live page. 
And so here it's working just fine. And then we get a pointer there. So I wonder what that is. Let me just pause for one second. And so here's a nice little page from uh, W3 Schools. And as you go down here and you put your mouse over all these, you see what all the different values are for the cursor property. So we're going to come down here to text, and that's what we are looking for. Is So it should be cursor of text. Default, as you saw, gives you the pointer. Well, it gives you the arrow, not the pointy finger. And when you go into, let's go over here. So here you get the pointer here you get the straight up and down line signifying text so that's what we want to change this to so we'll come down here we will say we want here text and now we will save this one last time reload the page and that should be it and i'm trying to think was there anything i missed as far as how we want this to work so that's working just fine but the big thing is as uh, we started off with when people come in here they have this set to bold and are not able to then get the uh, font to change over here get the color to change on the font specifically and uh, because it's already set to bold you actually have to use the tags take advantage of the tags well come on cut it out here um, and turn it to bold, turn it to italics, whatever. Then again, with a little bit of CSS, you can go in there and you can manipulate that. And I'm about ready to kill this thing because it's not doing what I want. And then I think that was pretty much it. Obviously, we can change some of the other things in here. So, uh, but if we do, let's say if we come in here, we do text decoration of underline, it's going to underline the entirety of the document here. And you're also gonna see here at this point, is we got now different colored underlines as we do this, which is quite interesting. Let's see if we do strike throughs. Yeah, we got different colored strike throughs as well. And I'm not even really sure why they have that value in there, the overline on it. So there's a lot of different things you can do coming in here, playing with the CSS. And we'll just set that back to normal and normal as well. So just wanted to show you a couple of options, a couple of different things you could do as far as getting different text colors, font sizes, decorations, even font families on your text elements. So if you got any questions, just let me know.